Erling Haaland grabs another two goals as Manchester City beat Leicester 3-1 to move within four points of Arsenal. Jules, this was way tighter than it should have been in the second half. And I wonder if Pep got a little too happy with his substitutions. Yeah, maybe. Because I don't need to see Calvin changed... Phillips and Cole Palmer oh, no, so yeah. early in the game. As soon as he changed, clearly the, the, the game kind of... Not the momentum switched because they were still, they were still in control. But they let one goal go in. There could have been a penalty. They hit the woodwork as well. The one big and save Madison the threw on yeah. goal. So they... They, they stopped was... taking shots. The last half hour... They just, the yeah, they, just they wanted to control the ball. But they didn't control anything because uh, uh, Leicester put together like a, some crazy XG in yeah, the last half hour. Yeah, crazy chances, to be fair. I, I, I think I they think got away with this one. Big time. This is they a got away, They got away with this one. And Erling Haaland now, you know, on the, on the level of the, the most Salah record for, for a, okay, a Premier like, League. They, 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 yeah, it's they, important. They, they, 38 games. No, the record belongs to Alan Shear. Yeah, and I know 40, he had more 42 games. 42 games. Well, yeah, it was. He scored yeah, 34 let's, and 42. Let's let Shear. We love Shear. Let's we love, love Shear. Shear and, enjoy and, the record. Andy Cole, is it Andy Cole as well? It doesn't matter. For me, it's just Shear. 34. Um, but yeah, so Erling Haaland, another break. Did Kevin Phillips also score some stupid amount of goals one year? Maybe anyway, just whatever. 30, I think it was. Brighton put on a masterclass at Stanford Bridge as Ooh. your boy Roberto De Zerbi outclasses Frank Lampard Jr. and yep. Chelsea. Jules, were Chelsea just too busy looking ahead to the Champions League in Real Madrid? Looking ahead to what? Or, oh, to come back from the two goal deficit against Real Madrid yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, of course. No, the Derby was really good. Yeah, Brighton were really good. But, I mean, Chelsea is not good. Lampard is not good. I've said it many times. I'm going to say it again. And when he makes those silly changes and stuff, let's give a chance to people who don't play. Why? You're not in a situation, <laughs> you're not in a position right now to give a chance to people who don't you know, who haven't been good this season, who don't deserve to play. You score a goal because you got lucky on the goal. And after that, you could hardly touch the ball. It, was, it could have easily have been, without Kepa at that kind of level, it would have been five or six. And it would have been far more humiliating. This is one of the worst performances that I can remember. Oh my God, me too. And in a very long time, not just this season. No. Lots of unavailables, but Manchester United nevertheless win away to Nottingham Forest to consolidate third place. Yeah. Jules, would you like to pray, praise the two Antonies? Anthony and Anthony Marcia, or just be mean <laughs> to Harry Maguire. I will start with Maguire, who should have been sent off after 20 minutes for the handball and the first yellow card. I mean, the first yellow card is just like a rugby tackle. <laughs> and then I don't know what he's doing with his arm on the corner. I don't know how VAR missed it. I mean, VAR is saying that it was crowded. It was crowded with his own teammates. What's, why is that? What kind of excuse is this? That's going to be another phone call from Howard Webb to apologize and one other VAR referee to be sacked. Um, yeah, I, you know, you know how much I don't rate Maguire. For Anthony, it's a goal and an assist. You take that. You take that for him, yeah. for his own confidence. There's still so many things that he should do better no. and should do more in this. He's not making. playing up to his salary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for sure. But at least you take that. It's still better than not doing anything. Spurs are blowing their top four chances, Gav, as they give up a 95th minute goal to Dongo Watara and lose at home to Bournemouth 3-2. I mean, come on, Tottenham. So I think what's going to, what, what makes headlines here is obviously Davinson Sanchez coming on and then being taken off. Fine. Yeah, but boot. Is there enough? Not nice. Boot. Not nice. Well, you know what? I don't have an issue with Stellini doing that. I, I think he explained very well why he did that. Yeah. You know, he brought him on because of the starter had been injured. He took him off because he wanted to put another striker and they went back for it. That's fine. What I don't understand about Stellini is this, is you say, oh, you know, we play really well and then we score. And then after we score, we sit back and invite on the pressure. Well, I'm sorry. It's like, oh, that has to change. It's been going on far too long. You've been there yep. for 15 months. You were Conte's assistant, but you're in the middle of it, right? Presumably, that's not what Conte was telling him to do either. No. So I don't get that. I don't get enough. And, you know, he's right. In the end, they pay the price for defensive errors. And by the way, it's not just poor Davinson Sanchez. Yeah. Look at Pierre Emil Hoiberg's defending on the third goal. Yeah. And that's the stuff which, which it's has a to lovely be. goal though. Watara is a lovely, lovely. I mean, to come in to come inside and just finish it like this at that time of the game, after coming on from on a sub ten minutes before, fifteen minutes before, it's an amazing it, goal. If that keeps them up, it's amazing. It keeps them up, but how how deflating does it have to be for Tottenham? In the I weekend, mean, when, when Newcastle loses well, terrible. you're going for, 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 for the top four. I, I mean, I got personally left out because I said, like, you know what? These players have pride. They have incentive to finish top four. Yeah. Instead, 
we go, we go, and we get this. Imagine they miss out on Europe full stop com- completely, like not even Europa League or I mean, Europa. Com- I guess the Conference League. No, no, they'll, they'll, they'll get that, but yeah, it's ugly. Newcastle also slip up, Jules, falling three nil away to Aston Villa. Unai Emery has taken twenty two of a possible twenty four wow. points in their last eight games. Incredible. Could Villa actually get into the top four race? I think the top four might be just a little bit out of reach, to be fair. If you look Newcastle at, keep losing. Uh, they won't, though. I mean, to be fair, they were well beaten by Villa. Villa played, <clears throat> it was a masterclass from Unai in terms of efficiency, everything, the way they put them under pressure. But, but even if you, fi- if you finish fifth or sixth, even if you, oh, if, you, if you get Europa League, Europa Conference League even, if you're Villa, it's amazing. Only City have won more points uh, in the last eight games than obviously... Unai, then Villa and Unai. I think since Unai arrived, only Arsenal and City have won more points than him. So they're, they're third right now in the Unai Emery mm. table, which I know doesn't mean anything, <laughs> but still, it's an amazing achievement. And the game they lost against Arsenal at home, 4-2, when they were, they were, you know, they could easily have got one point, if not three. So it's a great, the way he got them play. Look at Jacob Ramsey. Look at, um, look at Oli Watkins, of course, who keeps scoring like... Channeling is, is in uh, Erling Haaland. It's amazing. It's good. Well done. Well done for them. Really happy for him. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.